Suddenly it's a warm enough day for boating, huh? Fascinating, considering last week it snowed and dropped into the 20s. I'm in shorts and a sweater today. I think the sweater will get shed before long. I need to water some things, even though it rained. Something I'm finding with this area here getting established is that um, it being under the tree, it's kind of getting an umbrella effect and not getting as much rain as it would. So I'm going to do some watering here. That said, this video is not about boats, weather changes, and drip lines on trees. I want to talk about some general propagation methods to get more berry plants off of some types of berry plants. Um, and this was a request. I'll tag you in the comments. It's from Andrew Luttasaw. And um, he has a, a channel. I think it's by the same name. So here we have, inside this, slightly bent fence. I wonder what bent it. I wonder if something jumped against it. There are these gallon pots, and then some that aren't in gallon pots, that are my raspberries. So, as a nursery, some of my favorite methods of increasing numbers of plants are harsh. Oh, we have a lawnmower. <laughs> oh well, we can cope with this, right? Apologies, the neighbor's starting to mow. We'll just do the overview. We'll show examples some other time, probably. So here we have one raspberry cane and then you see another one popping up. Something I would do with this gallon container with the raspberries in it is pull up the whole gallon container out of the dirt, break away all of the soil and divide it into individual plants. A plant that is putting up greenery is probably already a gallon size root. These were initially over here, and when I moved them, each plant became three, because each cane had kind of chain effect its way over to create, wow, we got an airplane, we got a motorcycle, we got a really big boat, we got people lawn mowing. <laughs> That's summertime in the city areas for you, huh? So as they grow down the line, each little node that puts up a tiny bit of greenery is at least a root ball this big. But usually it's a root ball that's at least a three gallon size pot big before you, like, before you can even see it pop out of the ground. So that's something I do is dig up the entire plant, cut it into smaller plants, and then replant them. There are less vicious, I guess we could call that, ways. So this one here probably has three or four plants with it right now, even without anything poking up out of the ground. So that's certainly something I could do any day now, is take up the gallon size ones, I, uh, the three gallon size ones, because oftentimes I use those as containments for propagation, but sunk into the ground, they hold the same amount of moisture on average as the rest of the soil, so it makes it much more of an easy growing situation. They also don't freeze through. I think I see a tree growing there that I'm going to have to get in and pull out. But that also might be a black walnut, so I may pull it up carefully and see if I can transplant it. So, that's one method. Let's look at the results from another. We're gonna get closer to the lawnmower, not farther away. Look at your pretty flowers. Woo. 
So I'm gonna slowly work our way over here to another raspberry and another example. Near some really loud lawn mowering, I apologize. This is a dead stalk, but what I had done was bring it over, touch it down, put it under some soil, and now look, we've got baby ones coming up. Eventually the stalk dies. These are like three year canes, and it also depends on how the weather goes during the winter time. So this here resulted in this here which is exciting. So now let's take a look at the elderberry. My favorite way of propagating this elderberry rose from the fact that it needs so much water and this area was just draining away. I created a water collection trench to give it a better climate related to its needs. This one often didn't want to make it. It was close to death every year, and now this is the first year in 15 years that it sent up a second stock. So that's really exciting to see this. Also, look, it's budding. Wait, let me get the focus, focal distance correct. The buds are right by my thumb there, right, right there. Cool, so they'll, they'll bloom maybe next month. But here is my favorite method so far on the elderberries, though I haven't tried enough with another method I'll talk about in a second. So this is growing a root division out of the trench. When I dug this trench, I ended up severing a lot of roots. So what I come in and do is, once this is well established, I'll cut in with a sharp shovel. Sharpen your shovels, people. It's the best thing ever. Cut in here, tease it out, pack the soil back down, and then the whole root system gets transplanted into a pot. We're gonna try and control my volume based on what's happening next door. Uh, really awesome that they take such good care of their lawn. So then let's take a look just a little bit down here. Walking around the trench makes it difficult to have a steady cam, but from the elderberries down the street, they're a really aggressive native variety growing out of the, um, the reservoir several blocks from my house maybe a half mile or something. And this is a single branch with no roots, just cut. Well, I mean, I pulled it and it snapped. And as long as that soil in there stays moist, now I do need to sink that into the ground soon, but as long as the soil stays nice and damp, which is why it's in this trench, is to help it hold its moisture, then it will be able to produce roots. Elderberries are a lot more substantial than I initially gave them credit for. Same thing with this silky dogwood. It produces berries, but they're not supposed to be particularly tasty. I may harvest the berries, they are edible, but mainly I'll be um, using them for basketry and hill stabilization as a native. So then let's talk about this. I dug up the whole plant and got about 20 different roots out of the buffalo current that uh, was marketed as a just a regular black currant years and years ago in like Gurney's catalog or something. I believe I made this purchase in the year 99 or 2000. I was still living at my dad's house, so 
Over the years, this plant has produced an entire thicket that has been spread to create additional thickets. Um, but it not only had many different bits of root that all had their own piece sticking up, but it seeds. And it seeds true to type because it's just a native plant. So that's the next point that will take us to the Saskatoons in the back. A really, really important item. In addition to learning how to turn suckers, which is kind of how I'm using that trench there, is to harvest and create and then harvest suckers. So in addition to learning how to harvest suckers, it is really important to start to recognize the early growth of a seedling of plants that you like. Just let things get old enough that you can recognize them. Or put down the seeds in a specific place over winter to see if they'll come up. Because a lot of seeds need a cold period and protection from, from birds. But I will be keeping an eye out for seedlings of these Saskatoons all the time. And most of the one gallons are from seedlings because that's the easiest um, way to get a root that will fit in a pot that size. I will be also using a very sharp shovel and then following it up with a spading fork, not a pitchfork, spading forks are for digging, cutting these suckers free and getting well, and also getting this little cherry tree out, but hopefully getting a whole plant for each and every one of these. I have not tried um, just using cuttings on these, on the Saskatoons. I haven't tried just directly rooting cuttings. That would be a very interesting thing to try at some point just to see if it would work. <sighs> Those are berry bushes. Um, I guess you could count the sour cherry as one more berry bush. And it not only sends out suckers just like we were talking about, such as, but then this one here, that's probably a seed, again, dropped from the cherry tree at some point. There's another one over there that I noticed a while back and need to dig out and repot. So that is something I do is if I don't know where to put something, I'll pot it, but then it becomes nursery stock, or I can eventually plant it back if a place comes free, such as, you know, discovering that something's not doing well health-wise, then I can trade it out. Um, fruit trees are a whole different story. Uh, that is not nearly as easy to propagate, but berries, there's a bunch of methods that I use in the berry and fruit bushes form in order to create more plants. This is a native sand cherry that I'm really hoping will end up suckering and eventually creating some fruit, but it might need a better, better cage around it or something. I think that covers all the berries. You can use cuttings on the hazelnuts. The American native hazelnuts are a bush as well. Um, one of the ones that the rabbits came and broke off. Oh, let's move the peony out of the way. One of the ones that the rabbits came and broke off, I was able to immediately just stick it right back in the dirt and let it go. So, and it's greening out. So I hope this has all been very helpful information. And I hope you're all doing really well and able to take care of yourselves and stay healthy. 
and um, I'll show you more soon, but this, this is how my Saturday's going so far. Take care. Bye.